Hey, what's going on everybody? Hope you guys' this weekend is going well. So today, I wanna to talk about five reasons why the Sony a7 R2 is still a good camera for a beginner, even in 2022. Our top reason for today is gonna to be the low price. So you can get this camera used uh, on a couple of different websites, uh, Adorama, uh, KEH, and B&H for around 800 bucks used uh, for the body. Because what's really important is that you can get into something without breaking the bank, right? right? Reason number two why this camera is so good for you even in 2022, features that it comes with. 42 megapixel full frame BSI CMOS sensor, 399, on sensor phase detection point. This is the basically on the grid, uh, on the sensor, where the autofocusing can move to, okay? And so the more, the higher that number is, the more points that it can move to, the more agile it can be and lock onto what you're trying to shoot. Five axis image stabilization. This is really important when you're so maybe like street photography or sports photography, when you're, if you're standing up, you're holding the camera yourself trying to stabilize it, that image stabilization is a lifesaver. And five stops to that for a camera at this price, that's really good. Internal 4K recording. This camera has 4K recording, and you can get this camera for 800 bucks. S-Log2, so if you're new to photography, you probably don't really know what S-Log2 is yet. We don't need to dive into that today, but just know that that is standard in cinematography and videography if you're gonna color grade your footage. You need some type of S-Log. Full frame magnesium alloy construction. This, it is strong, this camera is extremely durable. You know, you could drop this, it's weather sealed, so you can go out into nature, get some nature photography if that's what you're into, or sports in the rain, anything like that. Additionally, this camera, 2.36 million dot uh, electronic viewfinder, which is so when you're looking in the camera, and trying to get your photo composition, it's gonna be nice and clear, and you can really see what you're doing. So, auto focusing is a, a crucial tool in photography, and like we are talking about earlier, if you're sports photography or wildlife photography, or even if you're just doing portraits, you wanna be able to lock onto your subject's eye, face at least, but also their eye, um, and to make that picture nice and sharp. You know, this autofocus also works with lenses that are not native, which means like if you're not using a Sony lens, since this is a Sony camera, the autofocus still works. Reason number three we wanna talk about today is, so how are you gonna learn how to use your camera? That's the most important thing, is being able to master your camera and its manual settings. This is gonna take time and it's not gonna come easy, but YouTube is a great place for this. There's plenty of uh, people on there who have been doing it for such a long time that can show you how to use your camera. There's even professionals on there that make YouTube content just to show beginners how to use their camera in its manual settings. That's how um, I kind of got my start. And then as you kind of build your foundation, you can get into like going to classes, photography or like lighting studio classes. Reason number four that we want to talk about today is going to be, like I said earlier, the lenses and how you can grow into this system. Okay, so one crucial point of getting uh, any higher end camera body is going to be, can you change the lenses? And change the lenses means I can take this lens off, right? So here we go. And this is a 50 mil. I could take this lens off and put on a 70 to 200, which would be like, you know, this huge lens and that would be great for like sports because I can zoom in and more detail in your shots that you're trying to get depending on the situation. But you need to be able to change your lens, okay? A lot of the lower end models, you can't change your lens. That's why they're super cheap. But see, in this case, this camera is a very reasonable price and has all these features we're talking about. There are hundreds of lenses you can get used on the market third party that can be adapt adapted onto this camera. The point of those third party lenses is that they're great quality, they are have a lot of the same features that the Sony native lenses have, like their G Master line, but they are more affordable. Reason number five is gonna be, what does this camera offer you versus some of your other options? So there's two options, right? There's mirrorless cameras and there's DSLR cameras. DSLR cameras are usually a lot bigger, more bulky, very rugged construction, but they don't have, you know, this super fast autofocus. Um, a lot of times you can't look right here on the back of your screen or into your electronic viewfinder and you can't see your settings change in real time. It's not until after you snap a couple shots that you can see uh, your lighting or your how your exposure is set or your ISO, your shutter speed and how that affects the image, okay? And that's really crucial to modern photography. But not to say that you can't do a lot with the DSLR, 
they just said, if you're starting out, you might as well start with a mirrorless camera since that's the way that the market is heading. Also, mirrorless cameras are usually smaller and lighter and more compact, right? So what does that mean for you? It means that it's much more portable, okay? So you can put it in your backpack, put it in like a little crossbody, a little fanny pack, or like, what if you like to go to concerts? You could, you could fit this, fit this camera, believe it or not, you know, take this lens hood off, pop it on here backwards. I can fit this in a crossbody like this and, and take this to a concert or a festival or, or just wear it around, you know. And then here's the one more thing I wanna to touch on today. So like I was saying, how you're getting this camera because it is an older model, you can get it for such an affordable price. I just wanna show you, but this camera, when this camera came out, this camera cost $3,199 for just the body and no lens. When this camera came out, this was top of the line. Top of the line in terms of manufacturing and features and what you could do with this. And the price speaks for itself. All right guys, sorry about that background noise, but we're just gonna rough it out. And since we're wrapping this video up, I just wanna thank you. Thanks for stopping by and thanks for coming. This is probably one of my first YouTube videos if you're seeing this and I was a little nervous to make this, but I'm glad that you stuck around and watched it. And please uh, leave some comments down below on things I can improve on or any advice you have that would help you as a beginner or any advice that someone gave you when you were a beginner. If you're not, that helped you on your journey and helped you learn uh, photography. And I'd also love to hear what got you guys into photography and what your favorite thing to shoot is. As always, the interesting anywhere.